Alright, so let me now work through an example of how we can use partial fraction decomposition to evaluate the integral of rational functions. Suppose I'm interested in evaluating the following integral. Well, the first thing you should do, which I will call step zero, is to make sure that the rational function is proper. So what proper means is that the degree of the numerator is uh, less than the degree of the de denominator. If it's not proper, then you'll want to use long division to rewrite it as a sum of a polynomial and a proper function. But here the degree of the polynomial and the numerator is 2, while the degree of the denominator is 3. So it is proper. Good. So we can use partial fraction decomposition right away. Okay, so what is step 1 in partial fraction decomposition? The first step is to factor the denominator. So we want to rewrite the, the denominator as a product of linear factors and irreducible quadratic factor. Now you may think it's already factorized because it's a linear and a quadratic factor, but x squared minus 1 is not irreducible. You can rewrite it as a product of two linear factors, right? x squared minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we need to do one step to factorize the denominator here. So we rewrite the denominator as x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And now it is in factorized form, but in fact there's two times the same factor, so we can combine them here as x minus 1 square times x plus 1. All right, so this is the denominator in factorized form. Okay, good. Step two is to write down the partial fraction decomposition according to the rules that we've seen in the previous video. So I'm going to forget for a second that I'm integrating, and I'm just going to look at the rational function itself to find its partial fraction decomposition. All right, so first there's a simple linear, fra linear factor x plus 1, so I'll get a single term for this one, which has this form. Now the other factor is uh, here is also linear, but it comes with exponent 2, so I get two terms one where I have the exponent 1 in the denominator, and another one with exponent 2. All right, so this is the partial fraction decomposition for my uh, rational function. And step 3 is to solve for the unknowns. I have three unknowns here, so I want to solve for them. Now the trick here is to put everything on a common denominator on the right-hand side, and then make sure that the two sides e are equal by equating the numerators. Now you have to be careful here. You don't want to put it, uh, you don't want to just multiply the denominators here because you want the denominator, the common denominator, to be the exact same as the one on the left hand side. Right, so when you put things on a common den denominator and you have repeated factors, you have to be pretty careful. Don't take just the product, but make sure you use the same denominator as the left hand side. So what that means is that I want to rewrite everything here over x minus 1 square, not cube, times x plus 1. Now, if I do that, I get a times x minus 1 square plus b times x minus 1 times x plus 1 plus c times x plus 1. And I want this to be exactly equal to the left-hand side for all x, so as uh, rational functions. So the only way that uh, these two rational functions can be equal, because they have the same denominator, is for the numerators to be exactly equal. So... What follows from here is that the numerator on the left-hand side, so let me rewrite it more explicitly as 1 times x squared plus 0 times x plus 1, just to make it very explicit. This has to be equal to the right-hand side, so I'm going to expand all the terms here so that I can collect the powers of x afterwards. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus b times x squared minus 1 plus c times x plus 1. And then I'm just going to collect the powers of x, so the powers of x squared here will be a plus b. Powers of x will be minus 2a plus c. Then the constant terms will be a minus b plus c. Now I want the two sides to be equal. So each uh, term has to be equal, the, the terms must be equal term by term by powers of x. So for example, 1 must be equal to a plus b. Uh, 0 here must be equal to the coefficient of x minus 2a plus c, and for the other one, 1 must be equal to a minus b plus c. So I end up with a system of three equations. First one is that a plus b 
is equal to 1. Second one is that minus 2a plus c is equal to 0. And the third one is that a minus b plus c is equal to 1. So this is the system of three equations for three unknowns that I'm trying to solve. So, by the way, uh, I, I will show you in class a faster way of solving for the unknowns here. Instead of putting everything on a common, well, this first step is the same, but instead of just equating coefficients of x here, there's actually a faster way that works in most cases. We'll study that in class. But this is a fail uh, proof where it will always work. Putting things on common denominator and equating coefficients is always going to work. All right. So I'll have to change slides. So let me copy this to the next slide. Copy, right, move here. And then I'll just paste here. All right. And this is the system of equation I'm trying to solve. It's a pretty easy system. This equation here implies that C is equal to 2A. This equation here implies that B is equal to 1 minus A. So I can substitute all of that in the last equation. I get A minus 1 minus A plus 2A is equal to 1, which is the same as saying that A plus A plus A so that's 4A is equal to 1, and then the minus 1 on the other side gives me a 2. That is A is equal to 1 half. Then I can substitute in my other equation that gives me that C is equal to 1, and B is also equal to 1 half. All right, so combine, combining all that together, I get the partial fraction decomposition of my original rational function. So this was my original rational function. The a term was the x plus 1 term. The b term was the first x minus 1 term. And then the c term was the square term. You can look back at the previous slides, previous slide if you don't remember. Okay, so this is the partial fraction decomposition. That's great, because now we can evaluate the integral. So remember that the integral that we're trying to evaluate is the integral of this rational function here. But now that we have the partial fraction decomposition, it becomes just the sum of three simple integral. First one is the integral of 1 over x plus 1. Second one is the integral of 1 over x minus 1. The third one is the integral of x minus 1 square. All of these integrals I can do almost immediately. This is just log of x plus 1. This is log of x minus 1. And this one here, if you integrate x minus 1 to the minus 2, you get x minus 1 to the minus 1 over uh, minus 1. So you get basically minus 1 over x minus 1 plus c. And that is the final answer. So just to recap, because it's always the same technique, if you want to evaluate the integral of a rational function, first thing you should do is make sure it's proper. If it's not, you uh, use long division to write it as a polynomial plus a proper function, a rational function. Now, if it is proper, you can use partial fraction decomposition. First step is to uh, factor the denominator into a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Second step, is to write down the partial fraction decomposition in terms of a certain set of unknowns according to the rules that we've seen. Third, well, third step, yeah, I guess, is to uh, solve for the unknowns by putting everything on a common denominator. We'll see a slightly faster method for this uh, step in class. And then the last step is just to evaluate the integral by evaluating the integral of the simpler fractions that you get from the decomposition. Now here, all integrals were straightforward. If you have irreducible quadratic factors in your denominator here, you will end up with some integrals that are a little more complicated. You may need to use trig substitution, for example, to evaluate those, but they are still pretty straightforward.